Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Soundbites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we might rejoice with you and pray with you. Would you now join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, you are the supreme teacher. Prepare our hearts and minds to receive a word from you as we share together this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul in chapter 3 of Colossians verse 5 begins to give instructions to the church for what the Revised Standard Translation calls the transformed life. So let us read verses 5 through 17 of this chapter 3 and see what Paul has to say. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to one another, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all of these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether it in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As you can see in verses 5 through 11, Paul describes what must change in order to live that transformed life. And then in verses 12 through 16, what a Christian's new life should reflect. Paul calls what must be changed as habits of your old earthly nature. The Wycliffe's commentary states that what a man believes does determine in substantial measure how he acts. It stands to reason then if a person believes in God and has accepted Christ, then their habits must reflect this change in belief. Barclay's commentary seems to indicate that the phrase put to death means to put to death every part of yourself that is against God and keeps you from fulfilling his will. Much like the phrase that Jesus used in Matthew 5, 29 and 30, where he says that if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. Or if the hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better to lose a part of the body than for your whole body to go to hell. Jesus is not saying that to literally do this, but to recognize what it is that causes sin and to stop doing it. 
whatever keeps you from fully obeying God and fully surrendering your will to your will to his will must be done away with and replaced with the will to be in complete obedience to God. Easy to say, extremely difficult to do. In verse 5, the phrase evil desires and greed in other translations uses covetousness and greed. Now you may think that, well, I'm not bothered by that. I don't covet anything or anyone. But it could also mean the desire to have more. The desire to have more of perhaps the wrong thing, to be used in the wrong way. This could also be said about idolatry, which is the desire to get more. Never be satisfied with what you have. Never being satisfied with what you have. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you should not have ambition, but ambition for the right thing to be used to advance God's kingdom. In verse 7, Paul says that you used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived, that was your old nature. Also, part of the old nature is emphasized in verses 8 through 11, which says, But now you must rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge of the image of the Creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. All such things are of the old nature. And now you have a new nature in Christ Jesus, and your actions and words, words must reflect this new nature. The Scythian here that he talks about were, were a class of people that were considered the lowest of the lowest. And Paul is saying that Christ is also for them. Christ is in all and is all. Then Paul states in verse 5 through 17 what this new life this new nature must reflect. Let the peace of God rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You will notice that in verse 15, Paul mentions the peace of Christ. And I think that this is the peace that Jesus speaks of in John chapter 14, verse 27, where he says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not be troubled and do not be afraid. I believe that this is what Paul is talking about here, to let this kind of peace rule in your hearts since you are members of one body, the body of Christ. We are called to peace. So let Christ's peace be reflected in all that we do and say. And in verse 17, Paul says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And what was Jesus' answer when asked by the Pharisees, which is the greatest commandment of the law? In Matthew 22, 37 through 39, Jesus responded, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can do this, then perhaps our lives will reflect our new nature in Christ. And again, if you have any thoughts or questions, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may discuss them. 
May God continue to bless you. Have a great day and go in peace.